Hey, Pop, can I ask you a question? How come you ain't never liked me? What law is there say I got to like you? A man is supposed to take care of his family. You live in my house, fill your belly with my food, put your behind on my bed because you're my son. Welcome to Editors on Editing. I'm Glenn Garland. Hughes Winborn has edited such emotionally charged films as Sling Blade, Crash, for which he was nominated for the BAFTA and won the Eddie and the Oscar, The Great Debaters, The Pursuit of Happiness, The Help, and Pixels. He has now edited the riveting film Fences. Hughes, thank you so much for being here today. Really thank you, appreciate Glenn. it. We really loved Fences. It's a really complicated film. Not a lot of locations, and it's all dialogue, and I don't think people realize when you cut like a, a dialogue scene that's two minutes long, it can be a challenge to really keep. But five subtext. is a whole other story. But when you're <laughs> dealing with like a five, eight minute scene, tell me a little bit about uh, cutting this film together. Well, listen, I had the advantage of it being a Pulitzer Prize winning play. Unlike most films, as you know, I, I didn't have to mess with the script, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no restructuring. In fact, rather than dropping lines, I had to be sure that every line was in. Come back, told her, okay, baby, but I'm gonna buy me a banty rooster and put him out there in the backyard, and when he see a stranger come, he gonna flap his wings and crow. Look here, boy. Denzel would forget from time to time because he had, like... So the, much to deal with. Yeah, and in the first 35, 40 minutes, he's talking nonstop. But you're right, the challenge of doing a two-hour and I, I think it's 218 with credits mm -hmm. now, that's really just dialogue, and it's in a single location, and the camera's not moving a lot. It's a trick to figure out the balance between getting into coverage and staying wide, especially when you're working with what was previously a play. So where it's different, obviously, is that when you're watching this performed on stage, you can see everybody and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. When you're watching it on film, every time I make a cut, it changes everything. The language has a certain rhythm to it Mm -hmm. that I had to try and maintain and, and not break with cuts. The idea is not to notice any cuts, mm -hmm. hopefully. There are no dramatic cuts in the film. There's none of that. In fact, I, I avoided it. Mm -hmm. you know, I tried to cut in a way that I could let the language continue to flow and to make people lean in and pay attention mm. very closely. There's a bit where you might not understand everything. You might not hear everything Denzel says. Well, Denzel is talking really fast, too. I mean, the first half of the film, he's so talk. confident. I got some talk for you later. And you know what kind of talk I mean, too. You go on in there and powder it up. Joy, stop it. Then you have, like, this shift. He slows down his speech a little Joy. bit. I know she's a good woman. I've been married to her for 18 years. What you got on your mind, Bone? because he's not so sure of himself anymore. Right, right, right. Well, that's a very good way to, I hadn't thought about that before. That's a pretty good insight. Yeah, it's, it's true. He, he's controlling everything, and it gradually starts to slip away from him. Mm -hmm. I, I was watching it with my wife, and she was like, I feel like something not good is gonna happen. It, it, it has <laughs> she was this, right. this feeling, like they're joking, and they're laughing, and they're, they're smiling, but you get the sense like there's this weight and it's real, right? They feel like real people. Mm -hmm. There's nothing artificial about it. It's like I was saying with the cuts before, but it's also true with the music. It's also true with the sound effects. Is there, more than any other film I've ever worked on, there is an absence of manipulation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all in the language. It's all in the performance. Well, speaking of music, there, I don't think there's any music until... Gabe starts, right. he starts showing his mental illness. Yeah, right, right. And that's, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes into the film? Uh, 30, maybe about 35. 35. Yeah. I mean, no music for 35 minutes. No, you're right. And the music, as we move along, the music takes on a stronger and stronger role. It's really hard to compose something that's transparent but yet effective mm -hmm. at the same time. So this was your second film with Denzel. How has your relationship evolved and uh, what was uh, interesting about this project as opposed to when you worked with him on The Great Debaters? 
Well, I think he's more confident than he was on The Great Debaters. Uh, he has a lot of faith in me. My first cut that I did while they were in Pittsburgh was very close. When he came back, we fine-tuned my cut. We worked a long time on that scene in the backyard when Viola blows the lid off the film. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you. Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? What I just thought was beautiful is so many films, you're afraid to have your lead actress look like that. I mean, she's crying all over, but her nose is running and that's and her, all real and too. Mouth, and her mouth is, you know, you see spit coming out of her mouth and it, it just, it's so honest and raw. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you guys didn't, were not afraid to show that. When we talked about it and we decided not to do anything about it. I mean, it was totally real. And all that is pretty much from the last take that she did where Denzel kept, they kept going at it and going at it. And I mean, Denzel knew what she could do. He doesn't remember this, but I saw it in the dailies. When she finished, he went, he went, got it. <laughs> I've never seen an actress who can sit still and be as dramatic as Viola. I think it's really interesting when he's with his son Lyons who's saying, come to the, Come to the diner. Come to. T I don't like that the Chinese grill. music. Yeah, come to the grill, <laughs> and you know it's sort of heartbreaking because here's the son wanting to please his father, wanting to get some sort of validation, and you you have these reactions of Gabe, who doesn't quite understand, but he almost becomes our reaction, like this sadness, like can't you just give give him that? Yeah, Gabe knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's one of those guys that. Uh, He's a savant in a way. I mean, he's, even when Troy is dressing Corey down in the yard after Corey throws the football helmet, it's, it's Gabe over there watching like, why are they doing this? They love each other. Why are they, they mm -hmm. doing this? And the fact that, you know, you guys decided we don't have to play it all on our two leads here. It's like, let's, let's go to this other narrator well, that's, again, that is the trick in putting this film together because, as I said before, it was a play, right? So when you're seeing, watching that scene on stage, you see everybody. Mm -hmm. So you can choose who you want to look at. And more likely, you're going to look at the people talking to each other. But it doesn't mean you're not going to notice, oh, well, Gabe's over there, you know, and they're over here. and. You know, it's interesting you pick up on that because I was talking to somebody the other day who was going like, why did you cut the Gabe at that point? And I said, well, because he's part of it mm -hmm. and, and he needs to be a part of it. It's not just about Corey and his dad. It's Gabe is part of it. I think that it's important to, to show him because, you know, he is a part of it, but also seeing the scene played off of his face almost gives it more power sometimes when somebody else is talking, because you really get a sense of how everyone's feeling about this. Right. But then there's other scenes, which I thought was a great choice, when he starts talking about his father and how he grabbed that whip and he whipped him, and you stay on Troy for right. the most part. Yeah, you know what, it's interesting because as I've cut more and more, I've grown more confident to not try to use all the coverage. and. They even shot flashback footage of his father uh, beating him, and it didn't need it. Did you ever try it? I did try it, and it hurts the scene. Mm -hmm. it, it hurts the scene in a very, you know, in a very basic way. It's not that it doesn't work. It's not as effective as letting Troy, the character, tell the story. And that's what's interesting about the movie. People find different things to react to. I think because we're not telling them what to react to. And I think another reason why it feels that way is you didn't overuse the close-ups. You know, I did pop in from time to time to a tight shot, but I tried to do it in a rhythmic fashion. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it at a, necessarily at a dramatic point. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to do it so you wouldn't notice it. And I can't wear the audience out with tight shots, sure. right? It's like I leave space for people to look at who they want to look at. Well, it's also like interesting when you see the body language. When Rose gets the phone call from the hospital and she tells Troy, and instead of going to Troy's close-up, you've got his full body 
and that above shot. Yeah, and where he's fat. Yeah, and he's fat, and he looks. You know, he looks broken. He doesn't look that great either when he's got his head outside the window and he's screaming at God. Well, right you before know, that, I think it's really an interesting choice that you guys made to have him have this grin on his face. Like, he's had this horrible news, and then he sort of grins. So he did that particular scene differently every time. So there wasn't a lot I could do about switching around takes. There used to be a cutaway in the middle of that speech to Corey and his mom in the hall. Mm. And I, I told Denzel, I said, Denzel, we, let's, we shouldn't go there now because it's going to kill the shot at the end, which is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the transitions. I created the transitions in the editing room, a lot of them. I mean, the very first day I knew when I watched, it was the scene I watched, I think, was that scene in the backyard at the beginning of the movie. And I, and I, I, I need to find some space mm -hmm. for the audience to breathe. They had a very tight schedule in, in Pittsburgh, so I was on the phone quite a few times with Charlotta, and I said to her, just grab anything you can, whenever you can. Mm -hmm. I think I used almost everything she shot as far as transitional material. When he goes to the bar, there's a shot of, the, of all, the, all the pictures of the family on the sideboard and the Last Supper. You know, I, that was shot to be used anywhere. I put that in at the end of the scene when he walks out the door to go to the bar. It's a really great place to put it, the mm -hmm. Last Supper. And you have to get creative with whatever footage they give you that sometimes mm -hmm. you come up with really cool stuff as a result. There's another scene where Denzel, Troy, is singing to the baby. And you have these shots of Viola Rose at the sink. Right. But instead of seeing her face, you stay on her back. I like seeing people's backs. I've always thought that it's more interesting in a lot of ways than seeing their face because it gives the audience time. And I, I, this is, interesting. these moments, I think, are, for me, the most cinematic moments in films is you try to get the audience to participate, right? So you're not looking at their face, as we were talking about earlier, you're not getting a close up, which is gonna tell you everything, mm -hmm. not necessarily a bad thing, but you're looking at them from the back and you're looking at their body language and you're thinking about what is, what does their face look like? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the expression on their face? It just, you know, it just gives the audience another moment where they can, they can interpret, you know, rather than just, you know, here it is, this is what they're thinking. Sure. A scene that I thought was kind of complicated, talking about people's backs, when they're talking about fathers. The camera's circling around, and we're not inside the circle, we're sort of outside the circle, and the camera always is moving. Those are sometimes really complicated scenes, I feel. Well, I know you've, done, you've been there before. When that one comes in the door, you go, I'm gonna be working on this for the next eight months trying <laughs> to get this right. Uh -huh. And it was true. When, immediately when, it, when I saw that footage, especially since they didn't do that many takes and they didn't do it that many different ways and there were no inserts shot and then the wind was blowing and the mm. birds were chirping. So it was like a disaster waiting to happen, <laughs> you know. And it, but it, I, it worked out. Yeah. But no, you know it, what it's it like? It's out. like you work on these these scenes, and they're never right. And then somebody comes up to you after they've seen the movie, and they say, "You know that circle scene? That was really it. great." The uh -huh. way that worked. I said, "I'm glad you liked it because it was like the death of me when I was trying to put it together." That scene between Viola and uh, Corey in the backyard at the end is is really powerful. Yeah, that was, a, that was a tough scene. To, the, 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 the toughest part of, of that scene was when do we go into the kitchen to see lions? Well, what's interesting is going to lions and there and when lions is first introduced. Right, right. Instead of, you know, staying outside in the play, you wouldn't go to lions' no, perspective, no. but to, to make that choice. In remembering that every line of August Wilson's play is sacred, and especially sacred to Denzel, to cut away to somebody who's coming through the front door on the uh, entirely on the other side of the house and consequently risk losing lines because of his distance from the source, we had to cheat. Mm. You know, we had to, there's a car that passes by in the background that was loud. We had to almost take it out completely. Sure. The door as well. So you could still Focus hear. Focus on the 
dialogue. Here's something else about this play, and not to jump tracks, because it's not. This is why Denzel is so amazing, and why the play is so amazing. And they're all amazing, but Denzel, in the first half of the movie especially, the first third of the movie, like for instance, the scene after the backyard scene where Lyons shows up and they go inside, and he starts talking about borrowing some money. There are scenes in the movie that start off with one tone, they change tone in the middle of the scene, and then they go back again, mm. all in one scene. Whereas, you know, if it was being written as a, a conventional screenplay, they would be different scenes. You know, we would figure out in writing a way to, to write to this next tone, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because of the language and because Denzel, especially Denzel, is so amazing, he can switch tones and get really angry with Lyons about not having a job and then after Lyons leaves, go, Bono, see this woman? I love this woman, you know. It's a miracle how he does that to me. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just amazing to watch and it happens all the time. And you don't even notice it. Well, there's that one thing when he's telling his son, you're gonna get a job, you're not gonna do the football team unless you can do this job. Right. And Corey goes in, passes Rose and you know, Troy is full of fire there, but Rose comes out, gives him the stare, and you see Troy, he's, suddenly he, he's, he's uncertain, yeah. you know, yeah. which is great. Yeah. You know, well, to see it's that, because that, that, those transitions and, and thought. And you know, character. it's interesting, Troy loves his son. I mean, he's hard on him, but he does love his son, and I think part of his reaction to Rose when she comes out is, yeah, I was just really hard on him, but the other part is, I don't want him to be like me. You mm -hmm. know, I want him to have something better. It's a failure of imagination in part for him not to see what his son's capable of, but he doesn't want his son to end up like lions. He mm -hmm. doesn't want his son to end up in jail. I mean, I think really out of love, he, is, he wants his son to do what he knows will give him a secure future. Well, there's that powerful line when uh, the little girl tells Corey, he always called it Corey's room, you yeah. know, and you, Are you in the you, army or the marines? You see this reaction and you go, oh, that Corey girl, had no by idea. The way, here, here's another one, right? I've got all this footage. I've got the film cut together. I know it's amazing. I know it's great. It's really amazing. You know that when stuff is good. I'm waiting for the little girl to, to come in and just b burst my bubble because you've got an eight-year-old, nine-year-old kid. They come in it's and It's the they, end of the movie, yeah, too. It's the end of the movie, and it's the climax of the movie. You're going like, ah, <laughs> oh, no, can we just end here? I mean, he just, you know, he just had his fight with the devil and, uh, and with God. It, can that be the end of the movie? Because it seems like the end of the movie. But that little girl came in. I thought she was amazing. I, I really think she makes the end of the movie. You know, she's kind of like Gabe's kindred spirit, in a way. I like how you guys chose to have Corey show up at the very beginning just as Shadow because there's that line that you Rose You did has. watch the movie more than once. <laughs> yeah. That's as much as Corey doesn't want to be, he is his father's son. Yeah, yeah. All the intros are interesting, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Because they all happen like that. I mean, you're translating it from the play and in a way it's the very theatrical interests. I mean, Lyons has his interest through the front door. Mm -hmm. Corey has his as a Shadow. Gabe, what, oh, we hear Gabe hawking his goods, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we go, so he's kind of ghost-like, it's ephemeral. I also love the choice when Troy and the bar start singing about Dog Blue. And no dog named Blue. You know Blue was mighty true. Yeah. And then you continue that tying it with Corey looking at the enlistment office and then bring it back to uh, Troy on the back porch. You know, it's not often that we left Troy and mm -hmm. went with anybody else. True. You know, very, very seldom, um, if at all, right? And that's why it has sort of power to yeah. go to Corey, although we didn't quite leave Troy because we still hear Troy's voice. He did that a lot of different ways, too. Mm -hmm. He sang that a lot of different ways. Which is also why it's powerful when you cut to black when he's looking at that ball and things are getting fuzzy and he's... That you know, shot is amazing. It's an amazing shot and you hold on it for a long time and then you cut to black, It's it's got power to it. 
they had shot a crane shot for the end of that scene, but I didn't use it in the editor's cut because Denzel was so amazing as he was crouching down and mm -hmm. going, it ain't gonna be easy. It's cool that you had lots of coverage, but you wanted to stay intimate there. Well, here's another thing about when I'm cutting, if I can do it. I like to sit on shots. You know, I like it because I like to stick on it long enough that makes people wonder why I'm sticking on it in a way, but without taking them out of the picture, to add more importance to the particular shot. That shot has so much power, and the longer I, I held on it as long as the, the take went, because he called cut right after mm. that, that frame, because the longer you sit on it, the more impactful it became. Yeah, I, I feel like sometimes what people aren't saying has more importance than what people say. I do too. I mean, I like to take dialogue away when I can. I couldn't do it in this movie. Sure, <laughs> but uh, without getting slapped. But it was it was amazing. I, I really love the film, and I really love what you did with it. I appreciate that. Thank you, Glenn. I'm glad you watched it more than once. <laughs> you can tell. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Corey just trying to fill out your shoes. I don't want him to be like me. I want him to get as far away from my life as he possibly can get. You're the only decent thing ever happened to me, Rose. You can't be nobody but who you are, Troy. That's all you got to measure yourself against the world out there.